marhaba wa ahla wa sahla this is Ibrahim with you welcome to another tutorial uh, in this tutorial we'll be uh, studying the adjectives in a greater depth and detail and the reason I'm making this video is most of the time students that do ask uh, more about adjectives as sometimes it's not really as clear when they when they study it for the first time and the second time and when it comes to using it so this tutorial is dedicated to adjectives in spoken Arabic. Without further ado, let's start. We all know that in Arabic, vocabulary, nouns, can be either masculine or feminine. And previously, I've made another video uh, discussing the masculine and the feminine, so go and check that tutorial and watch it before watching this video if this is the first time you're watching this video. And make sure that you understand it and don't hesitate to ask any questions. Let's start. Uh, as we know, and as you can see in front of you on the screen, that in Arabic, you know, we've got masculine noun and we've got feminine noun. And the description comes after it should always agree with the gender. And if the noun is masculine, as in here, then the adjective should be masculine. So always the uh, adjective agrees with the noun. So masculine noun, masculine adjective or description. On the right hand side, as we see, we've got feminine vocabulary, bint, and bint means girl or daughter. And what do you see on the other side? The adjective is actually is feminine. Why is that? Because bint in Arabic is considered a feminine vocabulary. Uh, check the previous tutorial to uh, study the feminine vocabulary in greater depth. Okay, let me repeat that all again. In Arabic, nouns can be either masculine or feminine and for that reason then the adjective comes after it should agree with the noun so if the noun is masculine then the adjective comes after it should be masculine and on the other hand if the noun is feminine then the adjective should be feminine if you have a look at the other example so what we see is feminine vocabulary, they do have a very special grammatical case and that grammatical case is called ta marbuta. So the ta marbuta is the name, but what we are after is the pronunciation. And the pronunciation here is, could be either pronounced a or a. So, and we will look at that in a greater depth later on. When do we pronounce it a and when do we pronounce it a? In the example in front of you, we've got sayyara. Sayyara, which means a car. Sayyara, which means a car. So what do you see? You see that the noun ends with the grammatical case. That grammatical case, that's the shape of it, which is called ta marbuta. Ta marbuta, which means tied or closed T. And if you have a look at the adjective after it, it as well ends with the same shape. Why is that? Because if the noun is feminine, then the adjective should be feminine. And that is the grammar in Arabic that the adjective always comes after the noun and agrees with it. So if it's feminine, feminine, masculine, masculine. Let's have a look at here. What do we see here? We do see a number of adjectives. On the left column, on the top says masculine. So here we have kabir, sghir, qadim, jadid, qarib, baid, ghani, Fakir, Ghali, Rakhis, Mashrul, and finally Taban. So all these adjectives they should follow a masculine noun. So you could say Bet Kbir, Bet Zgir, Bet we remember Bet is a house. So Bet Kbir, Bet Zgir, Bet Qadim, Bet Jdid, Bet Qarib, Bet Baid, and Bet a uh, faqir, a poor house, let's say, bit ghani, let's say, uh, but it's more likely to be for people, to use it to describe people. Bit ghali, an expensive house, bit uh, bit rakhis, uh, or you can say sometimes people do use it actually, they say bit taban, or oh, the, the house is, is a wreckage, so it's really tired. And obviously, we'll get the translation here. And now, if we look at the right hand side, what do we see? We see the same adjectives, but only we've got a minor change, which is here that you see uh, at the end of it, it's added feminine case to the end of it. So here it is, that's the feminine case. And here in the third example, 
that is as well, that's the feminine case joined to the previous letter and that is the feminine case not joined to the previous letter. Again, both the masculine and the feminine, they're absolutely the same in terms of meaning. The meaning doesn't change, but the grammatical case changes or the grammar case changes. So what we've got here, we've got kbira, kbira which means large, and kbir means large. So both mean the same thing. They absolutely mean the same thing, but what changes is unlike kbir, it's more likely to be preceded with a masculine vocabulary because we know that adjectives always come after the noun. And the feminine adjective as well, kbire, is the same thing. It will always be preceded with a feminine vocabulary. So you could say, sayyara kbire, be car, sayyara qadime, an old car, sayyara jdide, uh, sayyara ghaliye, the car is really oh, the, a very expensive car, and so on. These are the adjectives in Arabic, uh, more or less. We've got, obviously, we've got more. Uh, but what, what do we notice? Both columns are absolutely the same. Uh, they, they have the same and they hold the same meaning and the same value, but only the grammatical case changes between both. The left column, that always will be preceded with a masculine vocabulary, and the right column would always be preceded with a feminine vocabulary, and that's the only difference between both. Uh, answering one of the most important questions is when students tend to ask and understand when do we pronounce the feminine case R or A. Here is the answer. So, if the preceding letter in the adjective is an Arabic letter or Arabic-based sound, then we'll add a vowel R to the end of it. As simple as that. So if you have a look at the uh, the left column, what do you see? We've got ha. Ha doesn't really exist in Latin-based um, languages or European languages, and it does only exist in Arabic. Or da or ta or ha ha does it, do, it does exist in uh, European, but we kind of like we say uh, Arabic special sound. So it does. Some of them do really exist in like ha. So we've got hasho, we've got chais. So does exist in some of the European or Eastern European languages. So we've got ta, a, sa, and qaf, and ayn. Uh, all of these, they're Arabic sounds. So in, if you want to change these adjectives into feminine, all you need to do is just, in terms of script, is the same character. Nothing changes in terms of the script. But what changes here is the pronunciation. And the pronunciation is what changes effectively. So we've got منيح, منيح, which means good. And if you change it to feminine, you can say منيحة. Uh, so uh, as an answer, if you would say, you know, كيف سارة? How is Sarah? And you would say, oh, Sarah منيحة. Sarah منيحة. منيحة, which means well or good. Great. And now if you, would, if you want to make it easier, so if the adjective ends with a Latin-based uh, letter, then you'll add E for English or English. So, in order to make it simpler, if the letter at the end of the adjective does exist in English, so then add a vowel to the end of it. But if the adjective does end with an Arabic letter, then add an R to the end of it. Make it simple, R for Arabic, a uh, for English. So, hopefully that would make it easy for everybody to remember it and understand and use it in any further use. Of the language. Let me read it for you. So we've got marida, basita, wuscha, hamda, sayya, rkhisa, maalla, wasa, mkhtalta, khasa, and if we change here, so we've got maftuha, maftuha, mtfaja, and arida. Hope you find this uh, case a little bit easier to understand now. When do we pronounce the feminine case at the end of an adjective, R or A? So R for Arabic, if the adjective ends with an Arabic letter, and a uh, if the adjective ends with an English-based letter. Our new topic, which as well uh, revolves around adjectives. So, and this one is what we call it in Arabic, you know, a nisba adjective. The nisba adjective, uh, we mainly use it to change any abstract uh, vocabulary into an adjective such as environment and it becomes environmental, uh, economy, economical. But today uh, in this tutorial we won't be doing that. Instead what we'll be focusing on is how to conjugate uh, the nationality 
out of the country now. So we've got a couple of steps to follow. Uh, we've got a couple of easy steps to follow. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got uh, the first one is not included. Obviously, it's not a country and it's not a nationality, but sometimes people use it. So I'm uh, included it for that reason. But if you have a look at the one below, we've got America, Britannia, Almania, Espania, Italia, Hollanda, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Syria, Mosul, Egypt, Al Iraq, Lebanon, Lebanon. Okay, so if the country name ends with an R, then delete it and instead of it, add the letter Ya with a shadda on the top, which is the in terms of pronunciation it becomes E E. So obviously not that strong, but you might get the gist. So we've got America which is the US America. And if you change a male American, then you delete the R and instead of it add an E and here we translate it right here with a double Y just to put great emphasis on the E sound. So you would read it Ameriki, Ameriki, which means male American, Ameriki. So America is the country name and Ameriki American, male American. And if you change it to feminine, then you'll add the feminine case to the end of it. And that feminine case can either be pronounced A or A, depending on the letter before, as we discussed it earlier. So it's Amerikiye, Amerikiye, female American. And Britannia is the country name. Delete the A and instead of adding E sound to the end of it, it becomes Britanni, male British. And Britanniye, female British. Almania, Almani. Almanie, Espania, Espani, Espanie, Italia, Itali, Italie, Hollanda, Hollandi, Hollandie, Canada, Canadi, Canadie, New Zealand, New Zealandi, New Zealandie, Australia, Australi, Australie, Surya, Syria, Suri, male Syrian, Suriye, female Syrian. And some of you may ask, well, what if the country name doesn't end with an R? Then you don't need to delete it. If it doesn't exist, then we don't need to delete something which doesn't exist. Then you straight away add the double E to the end of it and you add the vowel A to the end of it to make it feminine. So it will become Masri, 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 and Masriye, female Egyptian. Al Iraq is Iraq, so Iraqi, male Iraqi, and Iraqi, female Iraqi. Lebanon, or Lebanon, Lebanon, Lebanani, and subsequently to change it to feminine, you'll say Lebanani, female Lebanese, Mumtaz. And this is how you conjugate a nationality out of the country name. And to use it, obviously, it's absolutely up to you. Sometimes people say, Menwen Inta, where are you from? And you could say, Ana Men Almania. Okay, or you could say, Anna Almani, I'm German. So that means you're from Germany. So it's kind of either you say, either you're from this country, or you could just give your nationality in any context you might face. In this new section, we'll be looking at it. Some very special cases uh, that lots of students do make mistakes with and when they use it, but obviously sometimes it could be the right place and so most of the time it isn't. So this video is only dedicated uh, to adjectives and the misuse of some of them and how to use others in the right way. Okay, so let's have a look at the first note is shob and barada. Shob and barada they're only used to describe the weather. You won't use it to describe any human or objects. So you've got here it says الجو بلبنان شوب كتير في شهر ستة الجو بلبنان شوب كتير في شهر ستة And then the other one says عندنا الجو برد كتير في شهر يناير عندنا الجو برد كتير في شهر يناير Okay And then we've got the second note is mshawib and bardan they are only used if someone is hot or cold. So mshawib or bardan you, you would use it. If you would say, you could say, ana mshawib, ah, liom ana mshawib, you know, I'm really hot. Or if it's cold, you could say, ah, liom ana bardan or ana bardan, I'm cold. Okay, 
Then the third note is Sichen and Bered. Sichen and Bered are only used uh, for food, liquid and objects. Here in this example, we could see Dir Balak, be careful. Keset el shay sichne. Keset el shay sichne. The teacup is hot. Okay, the fourth note, qadim, meaning old, uh, they're only used for objects, not for humans. So you wouldn't say, ana qadim, I'm old. Or you could say, ana qadim min sara. You can't say that. Uh, you might use it if you say, uh, I've been here longer than Sarah at this company. So you could say, ana aqdam, ana aqdam min sara bil sharike, which means I've been working here at this company uh, way before Sarah, if you are comparing. Ana aqdam wahad fi al So I was, I was one of the, uh, the earliest people who worked at this company, let's say for example. Baikuli qadim is used for objects. So you could say, al bayt qadim, the house is old, al madrasa qadime, the uh, school is old. And the reason mentioning it here is sometimes students they use it to describe age. And I would like to mention this again, that discussing age in the Middle East, it's not as, uh, let's call it a gray area as uh, in Europe. So, you know, you wouldn't ask someone, uh, how old are you? Or, you know, so, but in the Middle East it's fine. People don't really pay attention to uh, age or anything like that. And uh, even like birthdays, birthdays like, uh, in the Middle East is not celebrated. Obviously, that's not entirely true because lots of people do. And recently with the new wave and impact uh, from other countries or European countries, then people started to kind of like, oh, we we'll still celebrate birthdays. So in the Middle East, we don't really celebrate birthdays and hence uh, people are very uh, relaxed about asking for age. And in order to ask for age, we've got, so people would say, Kabir bil Umar. Kabir bil Umar. Kabir, which means big, and B, which means in or at. Al Umar, which means age. And the fifth one is to negate, how to negate these adjectives. Uh, obviously, in Arabic, we've got more than one way to negate an adjective. So the easiest one is mu. You could say kabir, mu kabir, shob, mu shob, barid, mu barid, sikhne, mu sikhne. However, in Palestine and Jordan and some parts of Lebanon, people they use mish. So people would say mish shob, mish barid, mish sikhne. So here we go. So you could use either of them and it's absolutely fine. There's, uh, there isn't uh, a right one or a wrong one, but you could use either. So it's absolutely fine in my opinion. And no one would say, hold on a second, you've used that one and why didn't you use that one? Both are absolutely correct. So please feel free. And here we've got a couple examples for you to look at. So we say, Il akil barid mutaza. Il akil barid mutaza. Ahmad akbar minni bil amar. Ahmad Akbar Minni Bil Umar Umar Ain. So Ain is a uvula letter, it's pronounced from the back of your throat. A, A. So Bil Umar. And then we've got Jiddi Kbir Bil Umar, Basmu Kbir Ktir. Jiddi Kbir Bil Umar, Basmu Kbir Ktir. And there's something unique here when you say Al Umar Kilo. Al Umar Kilo in Arabic is a phrase. Whenever the age topic is being discussed and within a conversation, so sometimes people would say, you know, uh, amrak, how old are you? Amrak, if you're asking a guy, amrak, if you're asking a girl, and again, in the Middle East, it's relaxed. So people wouldn't ask like, oh, why did you ask me how old I am? So people are absolutely fine and they're very relaxed about discussing uh, the topic age. Or if you say, amra, how old is he? Amra, how old is she? Uh, then people as a response after saying the age, uh, people say Al Umar Kullo. Uh, I wish you many years to come with health and happiness. So the phrase Al Umar Kullo means that I wish you many years to come with health and happiness. Great. So now what we look at here, it's the same topic, adjectives, but with a different form. As I said earlier, uh, these are not the only adjectives in Arabic, but we do have others. And here we've got a new topic and it's called active participle as adjectives. As I said earlier, those 
were not the only adjectives in Arabic, but we do have other forms. Hence, we've got here the active participle as the way we use them as an adjective. Because as we use the active participle to express the state of a person, so hence we use uh, these as adjectives to describe feelings. So mainly all of these are used to describe um, a feeling. So we've got mashghul, we've got ju'an, we've got atshan, we've got mshawib, we've got bardan, fadi, ta'ban, za'lan, ghadban, sakran, we've got na'san, we've got sahyan, we've got mustajil, we've got shab'an. In order to memorize this, all you need to do is to memorize the masculine form. So we've got mashghul, ju'an, atshan, mshawib, bardan, fadi, ta'ban, za'lan, ghadban, sakran, na'san, sahyan, Mustajil and Shaban. Okay, so the first column, the masculine one, you could use it for I masculine, you masculine, and he. So I could say, Ana yom. And if I'm talking to you masculine, I say, Anta yom? Are you busy today? And we could say, Oh, Huwe yom? He's busy today. Huwe yom? And if you want to use and if you want to change the masculine into feminine, all you need to do is to add the feminine case to the end of it, as we did before with all adjectives. So we've got mashrule, juane, atshane, mshaube, bardane, fadie, tabane, zalane, ghadbane, sakrane, nasane, sahyane, and mustajle. And finally, if you say full, not hungry, shabane. So the difference between both is the feminine ends with a vowel e, as we did with all adjectives before. So it's really simple. And the feminine conjugation, equally, you could use it to describe three subject pronouns. So you could use it for I, feminine, I, if I'm talking behalf of Sarah, so I could say, Anna, mashrule. And I talk to you feminine, I could say, Inti mashrule, are you busy? Or I could say, Inti juhane, do you feel hungry? Or, Inti atshane, Inti mshawbe, Inti bartane, and so on. And you could equally use it to talk about she third person. So you could say, you know, Hiye, she, Hiye, mashrule, liom, she's busy today. Hiye, juhane, liom, she's hungry today. Or, Hiye, atshane, she's thirsty, and so on. So the first the masculine conjugation, you could use it for three masculine subject pronouns, I, you masculine, and he. And the feminine, equally, you could use it for three subject pronouns, which is ana, inti, you feminine, and he, ye, which means she. So very versatile and very useful to remember and memorize, and actually easy to remember as long as you memorize the masculine version. And if you want to use the same adjectives, to describe a group of people, all you need to do is just to add een sound to the end of the singular form. So we've got mashrul, I could say ana mashrul, and mashrulin, you could use it to talk about a group of people. So you could say nahna, which is we, so I could say nahna mashrulin, we are busy. Nahna mashrulin, and I could say into you group of people, into you group of people, into mashrulin, you are busy or are you busy, depending how you form the sentence. And you could use mashrulin for henne or humme, either of them, absolutely fine to choose either. So you could say humme mashrulin or henne mashrulin. So you could say, great, let's look at it back again. So mashrulin, you could use it for three subject pronoun the same as the masculine and the same as the feminine. So mashrulin, you could use it for they, henne, we, nahne, and you group of people, into. And all of them, the way you need to conjugate them is just add in to the end of it. So mashrul becomes mashrulin, ju'an, ju'anin, atshan, atshanin, mshawubin, bardanin, Faldin, Tabanin, Zalanin, Nasanin, Sahyanin, or you could say, Afwan, Nahna Mistajirin, sorry, we are in rush, and Shabanin, which means we are full, we are not hungry. 
Great guys, again, this is the active participle as adjectives. So we use it to express the state of a person or sometimes it refers to emotion. And this motion here, we use it to describe feelings. So they are used as adjectives. Don't, don't forget that we use them as adjectives. As always, we've got a new section, كلمات جديدة. كلمات جديدة. في عندنا هون كلمات جديدة اليوم. So we've got صعب, difficult. صعب is difficult. مليان, خربان. معفن, rotten, so use it for food. كويس, good. كتير, a lot, very. ليش, why. أحسن, better. ممكن, which means possible. And again, remember, ممكن does not get conjugated. Some students, they do ask, you know, can we conjugate ممكن? No, ممكن does not get conjugated. It's a phrase, so ممكن stays as it is. دايماً. لأنه and بسبب both means because and we'll have another video dedicated for these two to discuss in a greater detail and you've got كل which means all or every and then finally we've got أحيانا which means sometimes أحيانا أحيانا which means sometimes ممتاز يا شباب هلا هدول الكلمات الجديدة لازم تحفظوهن كتير حاولوا تحفظوهن حاولوا تكتبوهن على ورقة Uh, مثلا على ورقة مثل هاي يعني you know, حاولوا تكتبوه هون على ورقة مثل هاي وتحطوه هون على الحيط هذا هذا بيكون ممتاز كتير uh, okay guys so what I was saying Arabic now the the translation uh, for these new vocabulary always try to write them on a sticky note uh, sticky note and then stick them around the house this is a very effective method and I've used it previously when learning other languages as well myself. Uh, and it's proven really good. Uh, so what you could do is just uh, write five words a day, stick them around the house, at uh, different places, random places. You, so don't just put them around in front of you at the desk, like like, like now. Let's say for example, uh, put them in a the kitchen, a living room, maybe the dining room. Uh, and the idea is the more you get exposed to these new vocabulary, it will help you to remember them. So very effective method. Use these sticky notes and stick them around the house. Montaz guys, now we've reached to the test section. What I would like you is once you hear me saying and hit and the answer is, I would like you to pause the video, try to answer it and then play the video back again to check whether you've answered it correctly or not. So I would like you to like translate the following sentences from English into Arabic and the answers will be shown just after that. So whenever I say and the answer is, try to pause the video and see if whether you'll be able to uh, answer it. Let's start. النظارة جديدة مش قديمة المي سخنة مش باردة And the translation is The glasses are new, not old. The water is hot, not cold. اللغة العربية بسيطة مصعبة اللغة العربية بسيطة مصعبة هلا أنا مش فاضي أنا مشغول هلا أنا مش فاضي أنا مشغول And the answer is Arabic language is simple, not difficult Now I'm not free, I'm busy مبارح أنا كنت مريضة لكن هلا أحسن مبارح أنا كنت مريضة لكن هلا أحسن هي البلد قديمة وحلوة. And the answer is Yesterday I was sick but I'm feeling better now. This town is old and nice. ممكن بكرة أحسن من اليوم. ممكن بكرة أحسن من اليوم. هلا أنا جوعان وعطشان كتير. And the answer is Maybe tomorrow will be better than today. I'm very hungry and thirsty now. مو مشكلة بكرة أحسن. مو مشكلة هون أحسن من هناك. And the answer is It's not an issue. Tomorrow is better. It's not an issue. Here is better than over there. ما عندي وقت هلا لكن مبسوطة. 
ما عندي وقت اليوم ممكن بكرة and the answer is I don't have time now but I'm happy I don't have time today is it possible tomorrow ممتاز now we've reached a new uh, test uh, what would like you is to read and translate uh, both the questions and the answers ليش انت زعلانه انا زعلانه لانه سيارتي خربانه and the answer is what are you upset i'm upset because my car is broken ليش انت زعلانه انا زعلانه لانه امي مريضه and the answer is what are you upset I'm upset because my mom is unwell. The second lot. ليش انت جوعان اليوم؟ أنا جوعانة لأنه ما فطرت. And the answer is. Why are you hungry today? I'm hungry because I didn't eat breakfast. الإجازة كانت حلوة ولا مش حلوة؟ الإجازة كانت حلوة كتير. And the answer is, was the holiday nice or not nice? The holiday was very nice. El shay sikhan walla barid? Walla, meaning or? El shay mish barid, el shay sikhan. And the answer is, is the tea hot or cold? The tea is not cold, the tea is hot. أخوك أكبر منك ولا أصغر؟ أخي أحمد أكبر مني. And the answer is, is your brother older than you or younger? My brother Ahmad is older than me. اليوم شوب ولا برد؟ اليوم شوب ولا برد؟ اليوم شوب مش برد. And the answer is. Is today hot or cold? Meaning going to be hot or cold. And the answer? Today is going to be hot, not cold. Ildaris sahil walla saab. Ildaris sahil walla saab. Ildaris sahil ktir. Ildaris sahil ktir. And the answer is? Is the lesson easy or difficult? The lesson is very easy. El anine fadie walla maliane. El anine fadie walla maliane. El anine maliane lakin el kase fadie. And the answer is Is the bottle empty or full? The bottle is full, but the glass is empty. السيارة خربانة السيارة خربانة السيارة شغالة منيح Is the car broken? The car is working well أنت فاضية اليوم؟ لا أنا مشغولة كتير في الشغل أنا مشغولة كتير في الشغل And the answer is are you free today? No, I'm very busy at work. Inta inglesi walla ispani? Ana britani. And the answer is? Are you English or Spanish? I'm British. Intu joanin? Intu joanin? أيوة نحن جوعانين كتير شكرا. And the answer is, are you hungry? Talking to a group of people. Yes, we are very hungry. Thanks. Bye, مع السلامة. Bye, مع السلامة. مع السلامة. And the answer is, goodbye. Goodbye. ممتاز شكرا كثير على المتابعه بهذا القسم بدنا نشوف شيء جديد 
Thank you very much for continuing up to here. In this new section, we'll be looking at how to change the same adjectives and make it comparative. So we've got here a couple of steps, really basic, really easy, and the same related to adjectives topic. Okay, so if you have noticed that most adjectives in Arabic, the third letter is E. In order to change it to comparative, all you need to do, A, add an A, to the beginning of the adjective, then delete the E and you ended up with Akbar done. Make the first letter vowel, the second consonant, the third vowel, the final consonant. So it becomes Akbar, Akbar, which means greater or bigger or larger. And that's it. And if you have a look at the rest of them, here we go. Kbir, Sghir, Qadim, Jdid, Arib, بعيد, غني, فقير, غالي, رخيص. And if you change it to comparative, كبير becomes أكبر, bigger. صغير becomes أصغر, smaller. قديم becomes أقدم, older or, more, or ancient, more ancient. جديد, new, أجدد, newer. قريب, nearby, أقرب, closer. بعيد, أبعد, further. غني, أغنى, richer. أفقر, more poor or poorer. أغلى, more expensive. أرخص, cheaper. So, رخيص, أرخص. غالي, أغلى. فقير, أفقر. غني, أغنى. بعيد, أبعد. قريب, أقرب. جديد. أجدد قديم أقدم صغير أصغر كبير أكبر Great guys, and that's how you would change the adjective to comparative and be able to compare between things. Here we've got a couple of notes. So the adjectives when they're normal, uh, when they're not conjugated to comparative, you could then use them with masculine and feminine, but you need to change uh, the ending depending on the noun before. Here with the comparative, you could just use them as they are regardless if the noun is feminine or masculine. So you could say, Beti akbar men betak, my house is bigger than yours. Good comparison. Or you could say, Maktabi akbar men maktabak, my office is bigger than your office. Another good one. Or you could say, uh, Sayarti akbar men sayartak, my car is bigger than your car. As well, a very important one. So again, guys, uh, you could use when you uh, change it to comparative. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether the nouns or the objects you're comparing between are masculine or feminine. So seriously, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but as long, uh, as long as they are in the comparative uh, kind of structure, but when they're in, this, in the normal structure, then they, it does matter depending on the preceding noun. So if the noun is masculine, then the adjective should be masculine. And then if the noun is feminine, then the adjective should be feminine. And so on. Here we've got a couple of examples for you. Uh, in fact, you could test yourselves. So we've got Sayarti Ajdad Men Sayarto Hada El Bait Akbar Men Beti. My car is newer than his and here you go. The, uh, this house is bigger than my house. El qalam asgar min el ktab. El yom el tren abkar min mbarah. And here we got the meaning. Uh, the pen is smaller than book, and uh, today the train is earlier than yesterday, meaning it came more than the usual time. Okay, guys, so now what I would like, I would like you to read and translate both the questions and answers, so very much the same, uh, and try to pause the video once you hear the word or the sentence the answer is, and then play the video once you manage to answer the question and see whether you got it right or not. Al-Kirsi agla man kanzdi Hail ijazi ahla And the answer is... There we go. Brilliant. المشي أسرع من التاكسي المشي أسرع من التاكسي شقتنا أحلى شقتنا أحلى and the answer is 
Okay, walking is faster than getting a taxi. And our flat is nicer. Yes. Great. And in this exercise, what we'd like you is try to read and translate and then re replace uh, the underlying subject pronoun with the options uh, given to you. So we've got, uh, it says, Anam Shawab Utaban Ktir Liam. What could you replace Ana with any of these uh, subject pronouns? So let's see. Try to pause the video when you want, and then once you hear the answer is, try to pause it and then play it once you manage to answer and check whether you got it right or not. And the answer is. Enta uh, mshawab or taban ktir liom. So why we why did we use enta? Because we can't use into and we can't use inti. We can't use into because mshawab is on the singular form. I guess as taban, and we can't use inti because inti means you feminine and the adjective, and the adjectives are not on the feminine form. Here we've got Anta Mashul Walla Fadi Bukra. Anta Mashul, Anta Mashul Walla Fadi Bukra. And see whether you could replace Anta with Huwe, Anti, or Nahna. And the answer is Huwe Mashul Walla Fadi Bukra. So the only subject pronoun can fit instead of Ente is Huwe. And the reason is because Inti means you're feminine. And the adjectives here that only conjugated with masculine. And equally nahna. Nahna means we and all adjectives are conjugated with the singular form. And here's the translation. Okay. Al bit sghir u hulu ktir. And see whether we will be able to replace a bit with any of these vocabulary. So we've got a saa, el finjan, emmi, el sayara. And the answer is el finjan, el finjan, sgir, wa haluktir. And because finjan is masculine, and it means, if you translate it, it means the cup is very small and nice. El madin el adime, halwe, basgaliye. Okay, see if you could, which of these vocabulary can fit. Instead of El Madine. In fact, all of them can fit. Why? Because El Madine is feminine, singular, and El Tawl is feminine, singular, and El Sura is feminine, singular, equally, as well as El Jama'a is feminine, singular. So you could literally add any of these three vocabulary instead of El Madine, but here I added El Sura, but you could equally change it. So you could say El Sura, El Adime, Halwa. Which means the old picture is uh, pretty nice but expensive. Okay, and in this set, what I would like you, I would like you to describe these subject pronouns. Add an adjective after the following subject pronoun. So we've got huwe, huwe sghire, or huwe halwe, or huwe kbir. Which of these? And the answer is huwe kbir, meaning his big. Hiye, Zakiye, Awiye, Shatra. And the answer is all of them, because Hiye means she, and all of these adjectives are in the singular form, so you could say Hiye, Shatra, Awiye, Zakiye. She's a skilled and strong and a clever woman. Elbint, Sghir, Suriye, Kbir. What can we describe? Elbinet with any of these adjectives, and the answer is Elbinet Suriye, because Elbinet, which means girl, and Suriye is feminine adjective. Emmi, my mom, Lebnani, Matamse, Hanune. See what could we uh, describe my mom here with, and the answer is Emmi, Hanune, Matamse. So we can't use Lebanani because it's a masculine nationality, Lebanese. So we could only use Hanune, which means kind, and Matamse, which means excited. Okay, so here in this test, what I would like you is to translate the following sentences and give the opposite meaning, meaning negated. Sayyara Mniha. 
And the answer is the car is good. And if you want to negate it, you could say Isayara Mumniha, the car is not good. Il Mishkle Sabe. Il Mishkle Sabe. And the answer is The problem is difficult, and if you want to, to negate it, you would say Il Mishkle Musabe. Il Mishkle Musabe, and it means the problem isn't difficult or the issue is not difficult. Il Estaze Marida. Il Estaze Marida. And the answer is Il Estaze Mniha. So you, you don't need to always to negate it by mu or mish. All you need to do sometimes you could just add the positive adjective. So the translation for the first sentence means uh, the teacher is sick. And if you negate it, you can say which means the teacher is good, meaning well. And the answer is my family is large. And if you want to negate it, you'd say عيلتي صغيرة. عيلتي صغيرة. My family is small. اليوم أنا بالشغل. Today I'm at work. And the answer is Today I'm at work. And if you want to negate it, you would say اليوم أنا مش بالشغل. Today I'm not at work. أنا بعرف وين الفندق. أنا بعرف وين الفندق. And the answer is, I know where is the hotel. So أنا بعرف is I know. أنا بعرف I know. أنا بعرف. And if you want to negate it, you'd say أنا ما بعرف. So we'd use ما before a verb, and مو and مش before a noun. So ما before a verb, ما or مش before a noun. If you want to negate it. So, أنا ما بعرف وين الفندق. I don't know where is the hotel. Okay, so a new section. I would like you to translate the following sentences into Arabic. This is a difficult problem, not an easy one. And the answer? هاي مشكلة صعبة مش سهلة. I'm sick and tired, but every day I'm better, meaning every day I'm getting better. And the answer is Anna Marid Utaban Bas Ahsan Kilyom. He has a lot of work and he's stressed. And the answer is Anto Shirliktir Uhuwe El An Ando Shirliktir Uhuwe and he is U Huwe El An. We are hungry, tired, and thirsty today. And the answer is... So what do we notice here that wa is always pronounced u, very subtle. So when we uh, speak quite fast, uh, we don't give it the, the, the full extent in terms of pronunciation. We just go very subtle and wa becomes u within a speech. So people would say... نحن جوعانين وتعبانين وعطشانين اليوم. The old city is beautiful and the new city too. And the answer is المدينة القديمة حلوة والجديدة كمان. المدينة القديمة حلوة والجديدة كمان. This book is not yours. It's mine. That one is yours. Here, try to use the possessive il. And the answer is هذا الكتاب مش إلك. This book is not yours. هذا إلي. It's mine. هذاك الكتاب. That book إلك is yours. Everything is difficult here, but it's okay. And the answer is كل شيء صعب هون بس ماشي الحال. كل شيء صعب هون بس ماشي الحال. I'm hungry now because the meeting was long. And the answer is أنا جوعان هلا لأنه الاجتماع كان طويل. أنا جوعان هلا I'm hungry now لأنه because 
الاجتماع the meeting can was طويل long or tall this house is big but this house is bigger and the answer is هذا البيت كبير بس هذا البيت أكبر هذا البيت كبير بس هذا البيت أكبر She's very happy today because her family is here and the answer is هي فرحانة كتير اليوم لأنه عائلتها هون هي فرحانة كتير اليوم لأنه عائلتها هون ممتاز شكرا كتير لأنكم شفتوا الفيديو من الأول للآخر وإن شاء الله استمتعتوا بالفيديو ولقيتوه مفيد كتير ممتاز thank you very much for watching uh, this tutorial I hope you really enjoyed it and if you do have any questions please do not hesitate to ask and I'll get back to you as soon as possible until next time keep well and I'll see you in our next tutorial مع السلامة Thank you.